Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, my name is Arana Gozi. I'm uh, at MIT, and uh, this work was, it's uh, this ongoing project, um, and I worked uh, in particular with a, oh. Uh, are you are you sharing your screen, or? No, not yet. I'm about to. Uh, okay, okay, sorry, sorry. I just wanted yeah, yeah. to make sure, so, sorry for, for interrupting. <laughs> no, 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 no problem at all. Um, yeah, so this is work that um, uh, we've been uh, uh, ongoing for, um, for a few years now, uh, this is this is an application, um, and it turned it didn't actually start off as an OMR project, but then um, it uh, we discovered that OMR would be very very useful in a particular sense. So I'm just going to describe um, uh, what this application is, and then you'll see how how we come into it. Um, and I guess just the first thing I'd want to say is um, I'm completely new to this community, so it's been fascinating to see. Um, all the talk so far. Uh, so forgive me if I don't know all the ins and outs. Uh, but I do appreciate that the call for papers asked for applications and for people who weren't necessarily in the community. So that kind of gave me the um, motivation to uh, to to um, you know to participate. Um, so the, uh, this is an application called ContraQ. Um, it is um, uh, done here at MIT in the Music and Theater Arts Department. Um, there's a number of students who um, have been uh, uh, working with us on this, which is great, and also a number of partners, uh, various music organizations, orchestras, and opera companies, and and things like that. And we um, have some funding from the Knight Foundation. So the the idea here is, you know, um, this is the motivation. You go off to a concert, right? Uh, we all love music, and we are going to hear a concert tonight. Um, and uh, so what you do, you get you look at the program notes. Uh, at the Boston Symphony Orchestra, for example, and what you discover is this is 128 pages long. Oh God, um, do you really want to read all that? Probably not, you know. But you want to find out about the music a little bit. Eventually, you find the place in the description. And tonight we're featuring Claude Debussy's Nocturnes. So, so in in here somewhere you see fanfares heard softly in the distance, growing to splendid display. Like this is the only part that actually talks about what you might hear musically. Okay, but you're not going to remember that, and most people don't even read that, right? So, so we have this, this idea that maybe you can use your cell phone, everyone has one in their pocket, and what we do is we will stream in real time the um, kind of hints of what to listen to. Not the full program notes, but just little tiny bits that say, aha, at this moment in time, this is what you should listen to. And it really helps, especially if you don't know the music or for people who are not that comfortable with classical music. Um, so it's a real time, real time streaming system. Um, the content is established ahead of time for a particular concert, and then during the actual concert, it's synchronized uh, to the live uh, music, whatever the whatever the orchestra is doing. And in terms of what uh, data we can have, it's all it's you know anything that kind of kind of appears HTML, right? So maybe se little sentences or images, um, you know, a painting that inspired Debussy to um, to compose this piece, or even even some uh, little snippets of sheet music uh, that you can sort of see as the orchestra is playing it. And here you can also see there's a timeline that kind of tells you where you are on the piece and where these particular, uh, what we call cues, um, come up in the, in the piece. Okay, so this is the system overview, right? There's an orchestra playing live. Um, there needs to be a human operator. This whole task can generally be thought of as synchronizing a timeline of data to live music um, is sometimes known as real-time score following. And there are certainly algorithms that, that um, do a pretty decent job of, of trying to do that in real time in an automatic way. No matter what though, they don't always do a great job. And, and if you want it to be foolproof, there needs to be a person who is monitoring the system, making sure everything's okay. Um, and what's really helpful is for them to look at a score as the system is playing. Um, uh, so uh, basically the human operator is looking at this, making sure everything is going okay. The data from the computer on the system goes to the cloud and then um, gets distributed to everyone's devices where uh, that's how the timeline gets in sync. Okay, so that's how you end up seeing exactly the right uh, information at the right time in, 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 in the music, regardless of how the conductor is conducting it or what the tempos are. Of course, it can change night to night and everything still stays in sync according to the system. Um, so we decided we need score annotation. Why? Because over here, we want this person, the person looking at it, to be able to actually see the music as it's happening, right? It's much more comfortable to do that. Um, but we we only need a small subset of, of what everyone's been talking about today. You know, we just need the measure locations on the page, just the 2D locations 
of, of the measures in the page, right? And that can be extremely useful for this whole system um, uh, for content authoring, for deciding how you're going to place these cues in musical moments in the score, and for the real-time operation, basically, how do you make sure that the score is, is where you think it is uh, at the original time? And so um, uh, I thought I would just kind of demonstrate uh, what, this, what this looks like. Um, so I actually have the, um, an example here. So this is the concert queue um, system. It's all completely done in web. It's all a web app. And so we have all of our partners who are using the system um, you know, to create this. And so here's an example of Debussy La Mer. We uploaded the score, as you can see. And you can tell here, see, we actually know where the measure numbers are. And I'll kind of go into how we did that later. But these are all the pages that were scanned in. Um, and what happens is that here we have an example of a cue. You know, so for example, here's the beginning, showing um, a little bit about the introduction of the piece. Right around here is where um, things get interesting. The sun arrives, um, arrives is kind of a, a nice way of thinking about it. Um, and um, and here we have the actually the audio attached. And um, oh, I did not share my sound. Uh, so let me just uh, do that again here so everyone can hear. Okay. Um, so as someone is authoring the content here, they can say, "Aha, you know, I want to I want to add some note about the oboes. So maybe this got generated here. You know, and these cues can be dragged and dropped. I can move this around, you know, back to where it belongs, um, or I can make a new one. So that's pretty easy. Like for example, here, what happens? The right there's a I think uh, is that a um, it's a horn maybe that comes in. So I can just double click and over here say, you know, the horn uh, takes the melody or something like that, right? And then I can save it. So this is this is a very nice and easy way of, of uh, adding data and images and, th and things like that into the, into the timeline and basically creating a timeline of data, okay? And then on the other side, um, uh, let's go um, over here. So, in real time, what happens is that, so let's pretend this is your phone. I just have this kind of connected here. Um, and we can, uh, we can go back um, to this concert, okay? And then I can start directing the concert. So now pretend that I'm actually at the concert in real time. I'm the human operator, URL in the audience. Um, and actually I can give you um, uh, this uh, URL here. So if you want, um, I'll just post this in the chat. You can kind of go into your phone, uh, and just kind of go go to that uh, location. You'll have to get past some of the, you can skip through those uh, intro screens that tell you about the system. But basically what happens now is I'll start the concert, okay? So I just go over here um, and, and then I start playing. So this is what the operator sees, okay? And you can see here, obviously we know where the bars are in the score and we are also progressing along. And as that happens, um, everything automatically um, uh, you know, is synchronized, right? Now, for example, what's, let's say that the orchestra has to pause a little bit or things are going slower. I can, um, the human operator can kind of manage that. You know, I can either um, go a little bit faster uh, or pause or maybe slow down a little bit, you know, in order to kind of um, manage that. Okay, so that's the, that's the real-time operation. And this is why the score is extremely useful um, as, the, as the person is actually using the system. Um, so uh, back to back to here. Um, so let's see. Um, so for our Omar goals, re, re, very simple task, right? We just need to find the bar lines in the score. Um, uh, so it's a simple task. So it calls for a simple solution, I think. Uh, we want it to run in Python because we're running this on a server in the back end. We want this to be fast. Uh, and we actually want to focus on, good, on a good editor and a good user interface, a good experience for the, for the user who's using this, right? When I started this, we, I knew there was OMR stuff available out there. I looked at uh, Audiveris, which, um, uh, which I found, well, it was in Java, so that was kind of tricky to use and it was a little complicated. Um, and the problem I found was that it was basically tried to solve the whole problem all at once. And I just wanted one thing, you know? So it's funny, one of the things we've been talking about here is end-to-end -end solution versus, versus chopping things down into pieces, you know? Um, and you know, for this particular application, I just needed something actually rather simple. So I decided to write my own, right? We wrote our own code. So 
this is all stuff I'm sure that's very basic to this community, right? But just very simple computer vision and some heuristics. Horizontal lines give you staff lines and stabs. Vertical lines um, help you group stabs together and, and you can detect bar lines. And we created a web editor for this as well. Okay, so uh, just a quick overview. Uh, first thing we do is page rotation uh, just to maximize the sounds of horizontal lines. Um, this is obviously an important thing to do because we will be scanning for horizontal and vertical lines later. So we want to take an original, this is the original image, right? And we rotate it so that lines are as horizontal or vertical as possible. Clear there's still some image skew, but this helps a lot. Um, then we find staves um, and then group the staves into systems. So to find staves, we use a horizontal median filtering technique. And then we compensate for image skew a little bit. Um, we create a probability curve uh, based on a horizontal mean, and then we can do some grouping based on, on distances. And then to group staves together into systems, we look for the leftmost vertical line, um, which is usually the thing that connects staves together. And a discontinuity there means that it's uh, that probably separates systems out. Okay, so for example, here's a score, right? This is the median filtering version. And this is the sum of, uh, or the, the mean of all the rows, and you get a pretty nice graph. And from this, you can um, you can find the boundaries of the staves, right? Um, and then here's an example of, of where there's a gap. And so that means that these two are gonna be two different systems. And then we do the same thing for bar lines, very simple, um, right? You, here you have the image, here you have the median filtering in the, in the uh, vertical distance, uh, and then um, and then the mean, which which uh, gives you some a nice way of, uh, of finding the bar lines. Okay, so that's the that's the thing. Now, one thing we also um, have done here is decide to create a very um, uh, uh, simple, simplified version of how we how we look at things, right? So a system is just described by a, a two coordinates, top and bottom, and a bar line just belongs to a system and has an x coordinate. That's it. Okay, so it's a it's a much simplified rectangular coordinate system. It's not perfect, but it's really useful for this task because I wanted to show you the uh, the actual editor that we use, um, and that is here. Okay, so um, so for example, I'll just say this is the actual process. We we find a score. So I'll just uh, load this one, um, and now it loads the PDF file, and immediately I can start looking into what happened. Right, so. The server in the back end is now rotating the page and, and doing running the OMR task. Um, you know, but as soon as it's done, here is what we see. Okay, so um, as you can see, it did a good job of finding the systems and staves here. And we came up with this color note color scheme that lets you really quickly decide, oh, okay, are these the correct bars or not? You know, so um, I can also sort of toggle the bar lines um, to see what things look like. Um, and then meanwhile, it's continuing to generate pages. So I've decided this page looks good. So I'll move on to the next one. Um, and you can see here, um, oh, okay. So this is where maybe it did it make a mistake. I don't know, but clearly there's a bar here and a bar there, which is not quite right. So I can just go in here, click that and delete it, um, save. And then, you know, I, I can continue looking at that. Okay. So let me, let me show you some examples of cases where um, it, uh, it didn't quite work. Uh, or it worked okay, but but there was a few issues. So this is uh, the Scheherazade score. Um, everything looked good oh, oh, here. You know, I can kind of keep looking. Um, but then what happened? Oh, here, it made a mistake, right? It thought there were two systems, even though there's only one. So what do I do here? Well, I can just go in, into the system, click delete it, drag this down. Um, you know, and now I've I've corrected this, so I can save that. Um, and just another example, these, you know, I can go through and these all look pretty good. So far, the system has done a good job. Um, and then I get to here, and this is also, I see a problem here. It thought there were bar lines here where they weren't. So that's fine. I can just delete that, delete that, save that. Um, and where's another, another, oh, another example. Okay, this, it actually failed to recognize two systems. It thought there was just one. Okay, and you can see this is not correct. So what do I do? I can just move this up. This is just one system. And then I can say, no, I actually do want a system here. Okay, it's about that big. But then I can run the OMR example just on this uh, after defining the system, right? So I just find it for this and there it is. And now I can just kind of make an adjustment, right? So, so correcting any mistakes is actually quite simple. Um, and it's, um, oh, it looks like uh, here I can also run this to, to correct the bars on that. Okay, 
So, um, so, so very easy to use. The colors make it kind of nice and friendly. And so, uh, what ends up happening is is uh, people can, um, you know, can create this, um, uh, go through the whole process quite quickly and get to a you know a com uh, a completely perfect uh, system with a human verification. Um, yes. Um, so. Uh, We've collected a bunch of data over over the couple of years that we've been running this. Um, you can see it does uh, the algorithm does does pretty well, right? So we've collected so far. Uh, about, these are fourteen different scores for with about a thousand pages, um, and the algorithm as I have it set up right now uh, provides an F score of about uh, 0.976. Um, we basically just do a match. You know, a, a true positive um, is if uh, if it's were within one uh, percent. Um, on um, on the horizontal uh, or vertical axis. So um, we have mostly orchestral scores, which is um, which is kind of nice. Uh, I'm getting a sense from the OMR community that a lot of the scores you um, are dealing with are not necessarily full orchestral scores. Um, so maybe this is kind of a nice addition. Um, we've had real users using the software, uh, staff at orchestras and opera companies. They say it's fun and easy to use, which is cool. Um, and what happens is that um, we are uh, over time. We're just generating more and more of these uh, annotated scores. On, you know, of course, only for the for the measures and bar lines. Um, you know, but it's a it's a ground truth set that is kind of uh, developing over time. So uh, our next steps is hopefully to release this data, um, uh, and of course, we collect more data over time, and maybe possibly release this uh, score editor uh, annotation to as a standalone tool. You know, if if that seems like something that would be useful. Um, so sorry for going over a little bit, but that's. Um, that's what uh, I wanted to present. So thank you. Thank you very much, Iran. Uh, very cool application. Actually, uh, well, also, I wanted to say that I'm very happy that you brought yourself to presenting this. Uh, as you said, we try to promote that everyone, even without technical background in the in the field, can yeah submit something. And, and especially things like that are very, very cool for, for, for us. Um, so thank you. Yes, Are there you. any questions? Okay. Okay. We have. Okay, Alex. Yeah. Go ahead. I have one small question for yeah. the alignment that you do during the performance. Uh, do you do an audio to audio alignment, or is there something else happening there? Um, or is yeah, it just so it, a, a time tracking? Um, so it it depends. Um, uh, if the audio is available, um, which it sometimes is in a, in a recording, then yeah. as that recording gets um, uploaded, uh, then there's a correspondence that's created between the audio recording and the bar lines. And then at that point, um, there is a, a real time audio to audio alignment system. You know, that, so a microphone mm -hmm. is on the orchestra and then, um, and then trying to do a, a basically a dynamic time warping in real time. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. for that. And it works, you know, pretty well, I would say, you know, maybe like 95% of the time. And, but you always need someone there to make sure in case it gets stuck or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then there's other cases where the, um, the, um, audio is not available, say for new music that's never been done before. Um, and so if we can get a MIDI file, great, but sometimes that doesn't exist either. And in those cases, um, basically the human operator is kind of keeping, keeping it going and aligned. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yep. Yeah.